Beating Minecraft without any items is actually possible. Every end portal has a one in a trillion chance to spawn pre-activated, allowing players to load up specific seeds and kill the ender dragon without ever picking something up. But that is not the way God, I mean Notch, intended Minstraft to be played. The default world creation process involves the game generating a new, entirely random seed, and beating the game like that without using any items is... Yeah, it's impossible, so let me set my sights just a little bit lower. Can I beat a random Minecraft seed with the minimum possible items? In this case, I'll define that as defeating the dragon and exiting the end. Let's say, for the sake of argument, that you could find a stronghold in 6 minutes on any seed. Extremely generous, of course, but this is only a hypothetical. Any guesses on how long it would take, on average, to find a completed portal? 1 year? 10? A century even? Nope, to all of those. Try 10 million years! These are cosmic timescales, my friend, and right now I don't even have 1 million years just lying around. I'll get back to you in 2100 after immortality is invented. Like I said, it's clearly impossible to finish the game without anything entering the inventory in a normal playthrough. So I'm going to have to use SOME items, if only Ender Eyes for dimensional rift making. But those don't spawn naturally anywhere except for the portals, so I'm going to need some blaze rods and ender pearls. Blaze rods mean I have to go to the nether, which means I have to build a nether portal. And yeah, you can see where this is going. Using the least amount of items gets complicated real fast. You know what isn't complicated though? Disliking and unsubscribing if you absolutely loathe this video. Remembering to like and or comment and or subscribe if you reach the end and enjoy yourself might be a little harder, although personally, I think you can do it. But how exactly does one define an item for the purpose of this run? Well, that's actually super simple and does not have any asterisks or edge cases whatsoever. Minecraft has a handy dandy statistics system that tracks whenever an item is picked up, so at the end of the run, I can just add up all these numbers to get my final tally. Uh, alright, I lied, but it's really not too complicated. This menu doesn't include items retrieved from chests, which really feels like it should count. So there's rule number one. My counter increments whenever an item enters my inventory. No, 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 what about crafting? If I have a blaze rod and turn it into blaze powder, which I'll be forced to do in this run, should that really add two to my counter? After all, it is simply a different form of an item I already counted. Okay, fine, so the counter only goes up when picking up items or fetching them from chests. Stop digging yourself deeper, you fool! What about picking up an item I already used? If I craft an Eye of Ender, throw it to find the stronghold, then pick it back up again, does that count? It's literally the same item I already used, so in this minimum items run, the same item cannot count twice. Okay, come on, what now? Buckets? What about them? A bucket is a bucket. It does not matter what is in said bucket as long as it remains the same bucket. I am done saying bucket now. Are you tired yet of this trend where I get increasingly frustrated at the mounting convolution of the rules? Do you want me to bucket? Ah! Let's recap the rules. The counter increments whenever I pick up a new item from the ground or a chest, where new means that it hasn't been in my inventory before. Crafting new items out of materials I've already counted does not add to my total, and exchanging the substances in a cylindrical metal bowl doesn't either. Cool, I'm sure that absolutely no more complexities will arise over the course of this extremely entertaining video. Now that we've defined exactly what counts as an item, let's craft a theory about how to beat the game with the absolute minimum number of them. As you may have surmised from my repeated bad jokes about them, buckets are the lifeblood of this challenge. My first priority at the beginning of any attempt is the same, get a bucket. With such an iron pail, I can produce another portal, although it is quite a bit more complicated than normal. Once I'm in the nether, there are two things I need to find, a fortress and a warped forest. Fortresses have blazes, which I can kill to get blaze rods. Endermen spawn in warped forests, and I'll need to kill them in order to get ender pearls. With enough of these items, I can head back to the overworld, locate the stronghold, activate the portal, and kill the dragon. Super simple! What could possibly go wrong? Well, honestly, just about everything. But before finding a theoretical minimum, there are a couple more things that we need to discuss. First, which game version do I play on? Now, I didn't mean Bedrock when I said that, I mean which version of Java Edition do I play on? 1.16 seems like the obvious choice. Has all the features I need for my plan, but no extras to complicate things further. I actually played on Optifine 1.16.5 because that was the best version of 1.16 that I had installed and I was too lazy to care about finding another one. Sorry if zoom cam and removing nether fog invalidate the run for you, but if you're that type of person, you might get a lot more mad soon because my second question is, what difficulty level do I use? 
Sorry, sorry, that was a trick question. My goal is simply to beat a random seed in Minecraft with the least items possible, and while I'm not going to use any cheats, changing the difficulty mid-run is totally fair game. And if you don't like that, you can go watch someone else's video on the subject. What? Nobody else has done this challenge? Sucks for you, guess you're stuck with me. And I'll be switching between easy mode and peaceful mode. Actually, it turns out there's a very good reason that nobody else has done this challenge yet. You need to be clinically insane to attempt it. This challenge is still extremely difficult. Abusing that feature is quite literally the only thing that makes it possible. See, in Minecraft, food happens to come in the form of items, which means I'll have nothing to eat. That means my hunger bar will slowly deplete until I can't heal or even sprint. And those actions are kind necessary for playing this game, especially when I can't make any weapons to defend myself or machines to increase travel speed. Peaceful mode, meanwhile, allows me to regenerate in safety. There are still a myriad of dangers, so as far as I can tell, peace is the only solution. If you're interested in seeing this challenge while locked to easy mode, let me know in the comments, but there's no way it allows for the true minimum, and that's what I'm going for here. I encountered many unforeseen problems during practice and my actual attempts, but I'll get to those in the next section. For now, let's talk about the difficulties that I was aware of and actively planning around. First, I needed to get a bucket, the silver bullet for a run like this. A water bucket lets me climb mountains and obsidian towers, not to mention survive any fall. Lava buckets are fantastic weapons and allow me to build another portal without obsidian, but perhaps most importantly can destroy dangerous run-ending items lying on the ground. Powder snow isn't in 1.16, and milk doesn't really come up in a run like this either, but manipulating liquids is the primary tool that allows me to get through this run. Only problem is, crafting a bucket requires three iron ingots, so I want to avoid doing that at all costs because my pockets are just too small to carry all that heavy metal. Good news though, naturally spawning chests can contain buckets in exactly three locations. Dungeons, woodland mansions, and villages. Specifically, savannah villages. More specifically, savannah village houses. Even more specifically, these versions of savannah village houses, because the others don't have chests for the bucket to appear in. So my first goal in any successful run has to be getting a bucket from one of these places, because I can't really progress otherwise. Woodland mansions are immediately out, because they're usually way too far from spawn. So if I want a bucket, I need to find a dungeon or a savannah village with one. There's no other option. But that is much easier said than done. Dungeons are almost always buried deep underground, so basically unfindable unless I happen to explore every cave I see. Savannah villages, on the other hand, are readily visible from a distance. However, there's absolutely no guarantee that it has one of the five needed structures, and even if it does, there's only a one in nine chance that the chest actually has a bucket in it. Now, I know this will come as a shock to most of you, but I am a busy person with an actual life who can't afford to spend hundreds of hours wandering around random Minecraft worlds hoping to find a bucket. And this video has already taken me a long time. I've been working on it periodically since August, so I really needed a compromise. In my early testing, I booted up a seed in creative mode directly after randomly generating it in survival so I could locate the nearest savannah village and check if it had a bucket. But it always just felt wrong. Sure, it's still a random seed, but scouting it kinda kills the spirit of the challenge, and there's nothing stopping me from checking a whole bunch of other things, like the terrain, and even knowing a chest's content seems improper. For example, some seeds are completely impossible in this challenge because if the end platform is too far away from the main island, I'm screwed. There's no way to reach it with just a water bucket. Luckily for me, human beings have invented a wonderful thing called technology, and the one I plan to use is a decent solution for my purposes. This particular technology is chunkbase.com and allows me to check structure locations along with biome borders. Both of these features are super helpful for my run, but limited enough that it doesn't trivialize anything. I still can't see if the correct house is in the village or if there's a bucket in a dungeon. I'll still have to travel to these promising places without ever picking up an item along the way, and most of the time I'll still be disappointed. But this actually allows me to start attempts with a degree of consistency. Yeah, unlike every other run on my channel so far, failure here means restarting entirely. If I pick up some seeds, those have to be added to my counter, which means it's no longer minimum items, which means I have to restart. Similarly, if I die in the nether or the void, it'll be basically impossible to get back my essential resources, which means those were added to my counter for nothing, which means I need to restart. And sometimes, I'll just play a seed for a while before determining that it's not viable for a full run. No retries, no automatic checkpoints. I get exactly one attempt per seed. Because of this, it was important to practice and develop flexible strategies for every aspect of the run, so I'd always know what to do next. After acquiring a chrome canister, building a portal is always next on the agenda. For that, I need a lava pool, but not just any lava pool. See, I don't just need to build a portal, I also need to light it without a fire charge or flint and steel. 
Both are easy enough to loot from a ruined portal, but would add a filthy number to my counter, so I'll make do with the next best thing, a tree. If a block of wood catches fire in a portal, that also works to light it. In order to give myself a chance at this, the portal must be built against a tree. Hopefully the lava pool I find has a usable tree nearby. After reaching the nether, I'd use chunk base to locate a fortress and a warped forest, but just because I know where something is doesn't mean I can reach it. Even without enemies, navigating the nether is not an easy endeavor. If I can make it past treacherous lava flows, dodge items in vegetation, and dig through endless walls to finally reach these locations, I'm faced with the task of defeating many dangerous adversaries. Endermen are simple enough. Dig a two-block hidey hole, up the difficulty for them to spawn, then challenge them to a stirring contest, and, you know, beat them to death. It's slow, and it's messy, but consistency is more important than anything else. I still took plenty of punches, and those definitely hurt, but if I plan it right, I can always get back to safety in time. Blazes are much trickier. Instead of teleporting, they can fly, and obviously I don't have any ranged weapons to take them down. If I want any chance of defeating them, I need to find a spawner completely encased by the environment so they can't get away. It also helps to insulate me from other dangerous enemies that might spawn in nether fortresses. Even if I encounter a spot that fits all these criteria, this is one of the most stressful moments in the challenge. I hunch in a corner, staring at the spawner, not daring to blink in case four blazes appear at once and fireball me to smithereens. On easy mode, even even a single one poses a serious threat when I have no armor and no ability to regenerate. Getting double teamed will almost always end poorly. So I sit, and I stare, and if more than one enemy spawns, I'll immediately delete them and try again. If I get lucky, I must engage in mortal combat against my flaming foe, which consists of repeated critical hits while staying far enough away to avoid taking damage. In this time, the blaze will almost certainly be able to throw out a fireball attack, which I will get hit by because I have nowhere to dodge. Hopefully I'm still good enough to continue fighting though, and once I win, I can reset to peaceful mode, heal up, and do it all over again. Now, once I get back to the overworld, I'll head for the nearest stronghold. No sense in crafting Eyes of Ender yet, though. If I throw one and it breaks, that'll kill my run, which is bad. So if I've made it this far into the run, I won't be taking any unnecessary risks. The internet comes to the rescue once again, and using chunk base here actually helps me significantly cut down the total number of items I need. Normally, I'd need 12 ender pearls and 6 blaze rods to be sure I can activate the portal, but knowing the location of every stronghold allows me to check multiple. So now, we can finally put a number on this minimum item run. 16. 1 bucket, 5 blaze rods, 10 pearls. I can shop around for a stronghold with at least 2 eyes. Technically, I could look until I find an even better one, but I have to stop somewhere and I'm not going to check every single stronghold in the world. Sorry if that's something you wanted me to do. No. As for the dragon fight, well, I think I'll cover that a bit later. Gotta leave something suspenseful for the end of the video, right? After intensive planning and practice, I finally felt ready to properly attempt this thing. And on my first try, something very unexpected happened. I actually did well. I was doing great, in fact. After shopping around some caves and ravines for the dungeons I knew were hidden inside, I found what I needed. Escaping was harder than entering because of this dirty dirt blocked me from simply mining out, but I found some water deeper in the cave that I used to swim out. Then, less than a minute later, I found my lava pool with a perfect tree right next to it that I could use to build and light my portal. After torching some defenseless grass, of course, but I don't want the water I pour to produce any potentially problematic particulates. I also dug a moat to protect the lava, and a few minutes later, I had my portal. Look, three out of four corners! I'm just that cool. After the random flames decided to help me out and light the portal, I descended to the depths of hell and focused on finding a fortress. It took half an hour of dangerous wandering and digging, but eventually I made it through to a blaze spawner, nestled perfectly underground, and got to work. Once again, my luck here was superb. Well, that might be a bit of an exaggeration. I did almost burn to death, but it only took me a little over 10 minutes to gather the rods I needed. Now it was time to do the same for Endermen, although they do have some complicated quirks that I neglected to mention earlier. First and foremost, they can pick up blocks. This is bad. If killed while holding something, they'll drop it as an item regardless regardless of whether they drop a pearl simultaneously. So that's hazardous enough, but picking up a block can leave an item on top floating or disrupt the defenses I've dug. Neither is ideal, and both must be carefully accounted for. Plus, they're fast and can teleport, so burning in lava isn't an option like with some other enemies because I'll completely lose track of them if I do. I lowered my render distance, then set the difficulty to hard so they would spawn bountifully. When I found my next victim, <clears throat> I mean enemy, I would anger it, then lure it back to my hole so I could murder, I mean kill, I I mean, release it from the shackles of life. Over and over and over and over. Hey, I'm technically defenseless. I don't have any weapons or armor or anything. To get 10 pearls, I needed to kill an average of 20 ender people, which comes out to 800 health points of punching. That's four ender dragons, 
On average, it was a grisly hour of pearl hunting and item burning that ensued, unassisted by terrible luck at the beginning, but eventually I had everything I needed. As I collected my 16th and final item, my excitement grew, but my worry alongside it. Was the challenge I'd created actually easy? Could I manage to crush this on my very first attempt? It's the final stretch! I sprinted across arid desert and shattered savanna in order to reach the nearest stronghold. Drilling down was hampered by sinister soil, gravel, and even an underground lava pool, but the most fearsome combatant was my own boredom. Turns out it's just not that fun to dig through many meters of solid rock by hand. In order to speed up the process, I eventually began tunneling in a one-by-one -one space, and when I reached the stronghold staircase, I breathed a sigh of relief. I made it! Victory was near! But my jubilation soon turned to disappointment as I reached the portal room to discover not two eyes, but only one. Finishing may still be in the cards, but this wasn't the place it would happen, so I left swam across an ocean to reach a tiny island, which based on the coordinates sat directly above the stronghold. As I descended, I made sure to eliminate any items which got in my way, but I knew that eventually I'd need to trade my lava for water in order to traverse the stronghold and the end. I returned to the surface to perform this task and created a small hole in which to safely store my molten rock. So, that's all it takes. A single careless action to dismantle hours of effort, focus, and hope. A low moment. Who wants to see Minecraft beaten with 17 items? That'd be worthless and stupid. I quit out of the world before I got to see how the stronghold and the end were both perfect and would have let me finish the challenge in 20 minutes. That sort of taunting is the last thing I need. To make matters worse, the good fortune afforded to me throughout this attempt vanished entirely. The next time I tried, I couldn't even manage to get into a nearby dungeon without picking up sand, and right after that I had no good structures to choose from. I felt a little better when I found a bucket at the start of my fourth attempt, but then it took me nearly half an hour just to find a lava pool. When I saw a perfect little tree on a nearby hill, I was ecstatic. This was great, maybe it wouldn't be so hard after all. But then I made a very strange, very stupid decision. Instead of just clearing the leaves necessary to build the portal, I decided to destroy all of them, thinking I was out of range of any resulting debris. Unfortunately, I was not out of range. There is another chance gone. Maybe I'd better settle in for the long haul. Even with the psychic powers afforded to me by the internet, 12 attempts passed one after another without finding a bucket. If there isn't a savanna for miles, and all the dungeons are locked super deep underground, there's not a whole lot I can do. I can't safely dig through dirt or sand by hand unless I want to wait 5 minutes for an item to despawn, so resetting for a better seed is usually the best option. Problem is, making this decision often can't happen fast. It could be anywhere from 1 minute to over 10. Failure after failure, with not a shred of progress in sight, and my memories of the first attempt haunting me all the while. It wasn't until my 17th try that I finally found another bucket, but when I swam up a tree to get a better lava pool spotting vantage point, I dismounted said plant extremely recklessly, incurring a hefty profit of much less desirable vegetation. My 20th attempt forced me to wait 5 minutes for dirt to despawn in order to escape a cave with my bucket, but that was worth it because I finally managed to build another portal. I was starting to feel better until I walked straight into some seeds while trying to light it. I'd been so focused on defending the tree that I'd completely disregarded paying attention to anything else, and it cost me. Shortly after, I stashed my water near a tree I would build a portal at, but completely forgot to deal with the sand block inside and walked backward into it while trying to clear the field of grass. Clearly, I needed to be more careful. There's absolutely no room for error in this run, and I had to start acting like it. What followed was another disappointing string of failures. Sure, I can find diamonds, but not even a bucket. Getting stuck on an island in the middle of the ocean doesn't help either. But eventually, attempt 28 got me back on track. After finding a bucket in a village for the first time, I took 10 minutes to reach a lava pool and very carefully cleared away any and all hazards in the vicinity. At last, I was back in the nether for the first time since the beginning, and here the closest fortress was much easier to access. The blaze fights were off to a rocky start when four spawned at once, and I bailed out of my first chance when I flamed down to two hearts. But after that, each one I defeated gave me their rod, and less than four minutes had passed before I had everything I needed. But reaching a warped forest wouldn't prove so easy. I dug a hole through a wall for ten minutes in order to get there. But now, I can finally start getting some ender pearls. After leaving my hole to scout for further adversaries, oh, did you catch it? Well, I'm about to. I didn't even notice immediately when this warped root popped into my inventory, only when I was about to 
engage. I'm not sure, but I believe this Enderman picked up the block underneath it while fighting me, and I didn't notice because it actually blends in pretty well. And that's all it takes for yet another promising run to die. But it did boost my spirits. The end of this challenge constantly remains one good attempt away, and 29 put me off to a great start when I found a bucket in a shallow dungeon. Building and lighting the portal took me a little while, but at this point I was familiar with the process, and better safe than sorry. All was well until I explored another fortress for a properly situated blaze spawner and found a tree in my way. I didn't know they keep those in nether fortresses, but I guess this one's just a real special case. Maybe no Nobody has bothered to remove it because it turns invisible when someone looks. I carefully mined and burned a few blocks from a safe distance, then walked forward into the gap to punch through the other side where I was ambushed by an impossibly stealthy ward block. Seriously, I have no idea where this came from. I had clearly destroyed every block I mined, and I don't know what could have possibly caused this to drop from something else. Maybe there was a glitch and my items weren't properly scorched? No matter what, it really sucks, but hey, maybe the 30th time will be the charm. I was certainly charmed when I found a bucket four minutes in. I swam out of the cave to explore the landscape, managing to reach a lava pool before the day was over. Three nether opportunities in a row? My luck sure has turned around. Maybe this one could be different. You know the drill. Kill grass, murder grass, burn it all down. Also a pig, I wouldn't want him getting in the way. I destroyed a few leaves to make room, but none of them dropped anything, so I could peacefully put my portal together. In less than 20 minutes, I'd made it to the nether and that's good time. Still, it's early and best not to get cocky. There's work to be done. Right out of the portal, the situation seemed advantageous. A warped forest on one side and another fortress on the other. Just what I needed. Reaching the fortress required navigating a basalt valley, so I opted to tackle ender pearls first this time around. While digging the extremely necessary hole to cheese the enderman with, though, a piglin very rudely assaulted me. Guess I'm never truly safe from outside mobs, but back to the enderman. Here's a little extended taste of what the fighting looks like. Yeah, that's the riveting high quality stuff I know you're here for. It's just this 15 to 20 times, along with remembering to destroy any nasty blocks or items they picked up beforehand, which can sometimes be quite complicated without also torching the pearl. Endermen are fickle, finicky creatures and will often run away for chunks of time instead of repeatedly bonking their heads into the wall like good little programs. But after a mild 40 minute long ender person genocide, and for context that's extremely short, it was time to reverse course and head for the fortress. After crossing a basalt death trap, and a lava death trap and a spawner that's useless because it's right out in the open, I found as good as I was gonna get. Not perfect by any means, but if I can trap blazes in the corner, this could work. I did have some problems with other mobs spawning nearby though. Some blazes and ghasts took pot shots at me, and I had to delete a particularly curious wither skeleton, for his own good of course, because I, I totally would have been able to defend myself. There were a few interesting moments, like when another blaze spawned right outside the cage, but I made the right gamble and remained safe while I took down its cousin. Another got away from me, and a third trapped itself in the nearby crevice. After following down there to do battle, I thought better of it and decided to play safe. There's nowhere to dodge in here, and I was doing too well to end it on a stupid risk like this. Battling blazes took longer than I might have liked, but eventually I collected what I hoped would be the run's final item. It had taken me 30 tries, but I was once again on the precipice of challenge completion. Anxious to leave this hellish wasteland as soon as possible, I hightailed it back to my portal and sprint jumped north as fast as I could. Once I reached my destination, it was time to start digging and burning. General destruction of all sorts, really, from as far a distance as I could possibly manage. I've destroyed this chance once before, and if I had my way, that was not going to happen again. The journey down was slow and dark. I punched through plenty of solid rock, and diorite, and granite, and stone bricks. I'm almost there! Finding three ender pearls in a chest while exploring the stronghold stung a little bit, but nothing could have prepared me for when I entered the portal room and found not two eyes of ender, but three. I could have gone lower. I only really needed 15 items, but here was a chance to finally close out this challenge with 16. My original goal and the next best thing. At least my spare ender pearl might save the run if I found myself too far from the main end island. Before making any rash decisions, I took a break to practice and plan my next move. Oh yeah, the dragon fight, how is that supposed to work without any items? It's actually not too complicated, and I'd had my strategy laid out for this since the very beginning. Swim up the towers, punch the crystals, beat the dragon to death. Pretty straightforward and far from the hardest part of the run, but at this point I'm not about to take anything for granted. The end features three deadly obstacles. The dragon, the void, and iron bars. Yeah, two crystals are always surrounded by bars, 
and destroying it will inevitably drop some as pick up items. Luck is definitely required here, but it can't hurt to stay far away and leave immediately. The void isn't really worth worrying about, honestly, unless I have to cross it to reach the island. And the dragon? Well, she can't hurt me directly, but that doesn't mean it's simple. Acid Breath deals more than enough damage to kill me if I'm not careful, and can even mess me up while falling. Also, she can launch you if you get close enough, so I'll make sure not to do that. With a few more practice attempts under my belt, it was time to end this once and for all. Before entering the battle, I considered finding the nearest village to set my spawn point in case I died, but that probably wasn't going to happen and I risked picking up an item on the way there, so I decided against it. For the first time, I crushed my blaze rods into a fine powder and combined it with the ender pearls. Nine of the ender pearls. No sense in wasting that last one. As I stepped into the portal, I was met with a welcome sight. From inside the island, I just had to mine my way out. Tedious, perhaps, but at least it would be safe. Still not ideal, I was so deep I had to create a crack I could swim into before finishing the job. But now, freedom. The battle could begin. I dodged an acid projectile as I headed for the nearest metal cage. Might as well get this out of the way right now. No iron bars appeared in my hotbar, and I breathed a sigh of relief as I advanced on the next tower. Clearing up crystals went about as well as it possibly could have. Bam, 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 take them down one by one. The second cage posed no threat, and in barely five minutes since my escape from the ground, I destroyed the very last one. Now I only have one more job to do. 25 hours of thinking and researching and planning and practicing and failing had all led up to this moment, and after the dragon annoyingly decided to fly in circles for a little while, I got my first opportunity. Hey, that's some serious damage! But I never thought for a moment that I'd be able to take down the dragon in a single cycle, so I patiently waited for a second chance as I dodged acid shots. As the dragon left yet again, I realized that I had just come pixels away from failing the run. I had almost punched a torch on the exit portal. That would have been a brutal way to end this attempt, but for once, Lady Luck was on my side. As the dragon left for a third time, I knew I only needed one last cycle to end this. But with just a sliver remaining on her health bar, I got greedy. I jumped up closer, went for critical hits, and the warning I received just wasn't enough to stop me when victory was so near. And that's not good. Okay, let's do what I didn't do in the heat of the moment and pause here to analyze the situation. The most intelligent course of action would be to throw my ender pearl down immediately to cancel my momentum and save myself from the fall. So of course I didn't do that. Instead, I forgot about it, panicked, and saw the water bucket in my hand. I was about to attempt an MLG. Now, I've never been great at these, but thousands of hours in any game will lend certain skills. So I was feeling pretty confident in my ability to save myself. Not that anything but that. I know it's really funny to laugh at me for failing a trick here, and please go ahead, this video is meant for your entertainment, but in my defense, I only had two frames at 60 per second in which to click, so I was just falling too quick. I quite literally only had a 33 millisecond window. Uh, yeah, I really should have used my pearl. As the dragon roared in victory, I solemnly returned to the title screen and began another attempt. Ha. No. No way! Dying does not count as an item. With all the crystals gone, I can make it back here and finish off the dragon. This is still my challenge to fail. Respawn, here I come. I awoke at the dead of night in the taiga where I'd begun and began sprinting northeast without a moment's hesitation, by birch trees swimming through a swamp and steering clear of any chickens that crossed my path. I don't need egg on my face this deep into a run. Back down into the stronghold once again, and I managed to remember the rather obtuse path I'd taken to the portal. Well, no point in hesitating, right? I leapt into the portal and was met with an unwelcome sight. Yeah, I'd used water to escape last time, so now I'm stuck 10 blocks underground with no way out except for mining. Bad enough if it was normal stone, but end stone takes twice as long. My finger was glued to the left mouse button for over six straight minutes. My hands are going to be in so much pain five years from now. Anyway, it was really boring, but I'll edit it here so it just shows the blocks breaking and hopefully that'll look cool. It all comes down to this. As the dragon perched for the last time, I stayed well out of range and hit repeatedly and critically. Oh, come on. It literally has no health left. One final hit for real this time. One health left. I had done it. All I needed to do was collect my experience and stay far away from the dragon egg and the torches surrounding it, and I was more than happy to oblige. As I jumped into the portal, I can officially say that I finished a random Minecraft seed with only 16 items. If you're interested, I've left a link to the full unedited run in the description.
Woo, feels good to be done, but hey, I'm never truly done. There are a bunch of ways to push this challenge further, like locking the difficulty to easy mode or going for 100% completion with minimum items. Now that would be a long video, or I could be boring and just try for a luckier seed to get the total even lower. Please let me know your ideas down in the comments, and you might as well like and subscribe while you're down there telling me your Minecraft challenges, or dislike. Wow, if you're about to leave a dislike, you must have been hate watching this whole time. I'm flattered to have stoked the fire of anger that lights your cold, desolate heart. So in total, 30 attempts. Got a bucket seven times, to the nether four times, back out twice, and to the end once. And despite that, I somehow only have a 50% success rate in the dragon fight. Guess you can't win them all.